Why are these probability numbers different? A couple things. First, let's go to, and I'm going to show you this widget 360 in a moment. Let's go to implied volatility. The implied volatility of these options, the 72 right now has an implied vol of 35.37%. This number is used to calculate all the other theoretical numbers in the, for this option on the trade page. So whether it's probability of expiring, whether it is um, delta gamma theta, probability of touching, um, theoretical price, et cetera, et cetera. All that is driven by this option's single volatility of 35.37%. Okay? The 74 strike is calculated using 34.43. Okay? So all those numbers on the trade page are governed by each option's individual implied volatility. Analyze page, where you have multiple options typically, what the, let me step back and say that what the probability numbers try to do is assess the likelihood of something happening in the future. Now, crude oil, if we, can, if, if we could see in the future, um, in one month it's going to be some price. And between today's price and that future price, it will have traded at some actual volatility. The, Price of the of crude oil will have gone up to up a dollar, down a dollar, up fifty cents, down fifty cents, up five dollars, down five dollars. It will have traded with some volatility. Standing on February twenty third or February thirteenth, excuse me, February thirteenth, we have no idea what that volatility is going to be. So we have to guess at what it is. We have to guess. When you have a single option on the trade page, we guess using the implied volatility of that option. But when you move to the Analyze page with multiple options, well, here, what do we use? Do we use the 71 implied or do we use the 72 implied? I don't know. So we punt. Okay, we, we, what we use is the volatility index number, 35.26. What that number is, the vol index number, is the VIX style calculation based on, in this case, crude oil options. So whereas the VIX, is, when it's based on the SPX, is an, over, is an estimate of the overall implied volatility of SP, SPX options, and specifically for the front two months, it's a, it's a weighted average, the volatility index on Thinkorswim is the same calculation. It's the same calculation, but performed on crude oil. Or, in this case, let's say, let's say USO. Okay? Volatility in A, come on, here it is, 35.46. Now, gee whiz, that's awfully close to crude oil. Why? Because they, they, they're very similar products. Okay. So that single number, we need some future estimate. We need some estimate of the future volatility of the underlying, whether it's USO, crude oil, Google, IBM, spiders, Qs, whatever. We use this volatility estimate. This number governs the probabilities. Let's go back to CL here. Pull our trade back up. Nope. Don't want to do a ratio. Slash CL. Come on, CL. Enter. Come on. Oh, it's forward slash. My mistake. Okay. So this trade now is uh, show up. There it is. These probabilities are governed by the single volatility number. Okay, the single volatility index number: seventy percent, thirteen percent, one point one percent. All right. So that's why the numbers are different. Now let's go back here. Slices break even. Uh, why is it doing this to me? I'm going to check. Got a question um, from Rick online. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Why yeah, well, I'm pulling this up here. Okay. Why is the profit at 3,400 on this trade? Why is the profit 3,400? Yes. Because it has a multiplier of of um, I'm selling this. It's a thousand dollars a point, I believe, in the crude oil. Uh, 
um, so it's a much bigger product. In other words, a crude oil makes a thousand dollars a point. So you take thirty-four cents times times one contract is three hundred and forty dollars. We have ten contracts. We make thirty-four hundred dollars. Okay. So let me go back in. Let me enter this again. Which probability? I want to show that exactly again. Which probability is most accurate? Well, neither. Um, they are all. It's a formula. Okay. So it's you know okay here the P and L thirty four hundred dollars. You can see that down in here. You're always trying to guess at what the future volatility is going to be. All right. You don't know what it is. So for example, if I'm going to be selling a put spread in crude oil, there's something else that has to inform me on that trade. In other words, I'm not just going in on the trade page and saying, well, I'm going to sell every single option that has a probability of being in the money at 30 percent or less. I'm just going to sell it, sell, sell them. Okay. And I hope to make money. Well, no. You know, you can do that and you'll make money most of the time, but then you'll give it all back when crude oil drops 10 points or rallies 10 points or we have another debacle like we had in the fall of 2008. So just picking, let's say, your iron condors based on probability alone, you can do it, but you'll make money, you know, eight, nine months in a row and then have a big loser and you wipe out most if not all of your profits. Then you'll go back and you'll, you know, do it again, do it again, do it again, another big loser. Have a bunch of small profits, big loser. So using only the probability tools, what do they say? When, when all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, okay? The probability numbers are simply a tool that help you maybe make a little bit smarter trades um, um, that you that you are that you come up with it anyway. So in other words, why might I be a little bit bullish on crude oil? Again, do I know anything about crude oil? Not particularly, and you know, take my analysis with a grain of salt. But you know, around seventy and seventy-five dollar crude oil, I don't think is particularly expensive given what we've seen. If there's any sort of manufacturing resurgence in 2010, which doesn't necessarily mean higher employment, and may or may not mean a stronger um, market, you know, the equities market, there's going to be some support for crude oil as, you know, you still have to ship the stuff all over the country, okay? Uh, you know, a stronger China, higher crude oil. Um, a shooting war somewhere over in, you know, Belarus or whatever the heck is over there, crude oil is up $10. So I think the bias is, the bias is up on crude oil. 